In this video, I'm going to be explaining how to tie a clove hitch in several different applications um, that an arborist might find himself in, or ground he's more, more likely will be needing to do. So first I'm going to talk about the proper way to tie a clove hitch. There are two ways to tie a clove hitch. There is tying a clove hitch via end of the line, where you're using the working end of your rope or your throw line cord to tie the clove hitch. And then there is a way to tie the clove hitch via middle of the line, where you don't have the working end to, to play with, and so you have to tie the clove hitch via the middle of the line. The easier way, is the uh, fastest way, is probably middle of the line. So we're going to go over that first. Middle of the line clove hitch involves making two of the same loops, and then you crisscross your loops, you stack your loops, okay? And then you put that over something, such as an item that you want to send up to the climber or something like that. And you uh, dress and set, and you can see what looks sort of like an H with a diagonal cross member there, okay? That, look, that's how I know it's a, it's been done right. It's a clove hitch, and on the back side, it, just looks like two parallel strands. On the front side, you've got that diagonal strand going across. That's a clove hitch, all right? Now, <clears throat> I say that that's the easy way or the fastest way, but really it is also very confusing because if, if you do this differently, if you do this like say, you don't make the same loop and then you fold it like this instead of stacking it, you find that you're not tying a clove hitch at all. You're tying you're actually tying a girth hitch in that case. Girth hitch might work for the same function, but it's not a clove hitch. Okay, let's say you make the same loop and you and you don't crisscross them, but rather you you fold it like a book. Well, if you do that, then what you've actually tied in this case would be a uh, munter hitch. And a munter hitch does not function at all like a clove hitch. Although it is a very valuable hitch to know, it has nothing to do with a clove hitch, so it's it's an easy mistake that can happen if you're doing middle of the line. So let's go over this one more time, a little more closely here. Middle of the line, you want to make the same loop twice. I look at this loop and I see that the left side, the, the strand that's going out to the left is on top in this case. So as I go downstream, I'm going to go to the right, I'm going to go downstream, and I'm going to make the same loop again. Notice the strand going out, which is going to the left, is on top again. On top, on top, they're both going to the left. I know that these are ready to be stacked here, okay? I've done this correctly, so I can simply take this one that I tied uh, secondly and put it on top again. Do not fold it like a book, but turn it. Literally just place it on top, stack it. At this point, my clove hitch is assembled right here. I can put it over the object that I want to, to tie to, or I can open a carabiner, you know, and simply tie my clove hitch like that, all right? If that seems complicated, just rewatch that part of the video a few times, but we're going to go over the second way of tying a clove hitch, which is um, end of the line. And this, this might be a little easier to learn, even though it is slower to tie. Sometimes you might want to tie to something that's closed, like this ring. And you won't, you can't do a middle of the line because middle of the line has to pass over, uh, the object. And this, in this case, we can't tie to the ring with a middle of the line. So what we would want to do is, what we would have to do is end of the line in this case. End of the line involves making an X. You're going around your object a couple times here. And I'm gonna apologize in advance. It's gonna be a little bit hard to see with, with this small object ring. I'll do it on something else as well. You make essentially an X over what you're tying around, and then you pass your working end underneath the cross section of the X and then you've tied a clove hitch in that capacity. 
it's a little bit hard to see on that ring. So let's do it. Let's do it on this. If I was going to send this this uh, anchor up into the tree and I wanted to tie a clove hitch across it, I would pass my rope around it once, then make an X, pass, continue to pass it around. And right here you can see I've got my clove hitch now. All I got to do is take my working end and go underneath the cross of the X that I just made. And then I simply dress and set and there it is. There's my clove hitch via end of the line. Okay. Now let's move. Now that we've shown it with the rope, we're going to show these two techniques again with, with uh, throw line. Throw line, when you, when you route, uh, excuse me, when you've thrown your line over your crotch and you've gotten your crotch in the tree that you want, when it comes to setting the line, the way we typically tie on a rope to the throw line is via a clove hitch. So middle of the line technique, I'll take my throw line and I'll make the same loop twice and I'll cross them and then I'll pass it over my rope here. And you want to, you want to go down your, the tail of your rope. You want at least like a foot of tail. All right. And then you tie your clove hitch on your rope. Now, you're not ready to pull yet. You have to do a half hitch back up on the standing part of your throw line, okay? When I say do a half hitch back up, this tends to confuse people. They think they think that that they should be doing a half hitch back up like on the rope itself again. That that's not that's not what you want to do. Your back up when you're locking off your clove hitch Okay, you want to tie your half hitch on the standing part. Okay, the standing part is the part of the line or rope in between your working end and your running end. Your running end going, you know, back to the uh, bag or the basket or wherever. Okay, so standing part is in between your working and your running end. You tie your half hitch around the standing part to, to lock it off. So that's tying a clove hitch on the rope. We're going to do this one more time. Middle of the line again. Make the same loop twice. Stack them correctly. Stack them in the proper order there. Tie your clove hitch. You know you've tied it right because you can see that H with the diagonal cross member. Make your half hitch to lock it off. And as long as you've got a fair amount of uh, droop there, you're ready to try to pull it over the branch. Now... In the event that you're trying to pull it through a ring, okay, um, it could get, like if I'm trying to pull it through this uh, carabiner here, you can see that it, it might get jammed up and it might be hard to pull through. So in, we might, if we're trying to pull through a ring for some reason, or you're trying to pull through a very tight crotch, you can create a series of half hitches with the standing part of your line just over and over again keep working up to the tip of your rope here and finish with at least two half hitches close together which you'll see makes a clove hitch you can actually see that's a clove hitch so you're just essentially you're making like a super clove hitch and um then once you've done that if you're pulling through an anchor in the tree it's a lot more streamlined in that in that way. Now, you don't have to do this all the time, but every now and then it, you, you do have to streamline the rope and, uh, and knowing how to do it is a valuable thing. All right, now we're gonna go over end of the line with the throw line so that you can see this ultimately tying on the rope itself, okay? Tying on the rope via end of the line. We've shown you middle of the line. I'm going to show you end of the line. Again, make an X by going around the rope one full time and basically another half time. Okay, I made an X. I can go around. I keep coming around the rope. So I'm around the rope two times, but I've made this X. I take my working end and I'm going to lift up this little spot of the X that's crossed here and I'm going to pass through straight through. I am not passing like this and I am not 
passing like this. That would not be directly under the X. That would be off to the side, right? So I am passing straight through. And then I'm going to dress and set by pulling the working end and the standing part opposite each other. I have dressed and set it, and I finish with a half hitch right there, okay? If you don't do a half hitch finish, and somebody were to was to pull it hard enough, it can, well, depending on your throw line, it can slip out pretty good, okay? It can slip out, it can come off, um, and then you have to retoss, all right? If you happen to tie um, a cow hitch, and you put that on your rope, Notice that that's not a clove hitch, it's a cow hitch, or uh, also known as a girth hitch. Um, it'll work the same, it'll do the same function as your clove hitch, as long as you, as long as you put your um, half hitch on the standing part like you would the clove hitch. If you don't put that half hitch on, you'll see very clearly how all I gotta do is pull this and it just, it just slips very easily and comes out. So that's why that half hitch is really important, that uh, around the standing part. All right, so one more time, one more time, clove hitch, make your X, okay? Pass, this is end of the line, pass right underneath the cross. I think this is a little bit easier when you're first learning how to tie a clove hitch because you can actually see what you're doing. You can see the X, okay? Finish with a stand, uh, with a half hitch around the standing part. A clove hitch, and I'm not trying to beat a dead horse, but the more someone understands the functions of the knot and why it is what it is, the better they're going to understand how to tie it in, in different scenarios. A clove hitch is just really one half hitch followed by the same exact half hitch around something. You see, that's a clove hitch. So that's why you can tie it middle of the line so easily once you understand the functions of the knot. Now, if I tie this half hitch and then I tie a different half hitch that is no longer a clove hitch that that became a girth hitch or a cow hitch okay and if i tie a cow a half hitch and a half hitch in midair and i i don't stack them correctly if i just stack them incorrectly and try to pass it over you see that i actually have nothing i actually have nothing at all so understand take some time to play with it and understand what makes a clove hitch a clove hitch. All right, understand why it works the way it works, and you'll be able to tie it every time with ease and uh, do, do a wide array of tasks with this, with this awesome knot.